and turn it over to Johanna. All right, thank you, Stephanie. Um, so like Stephanie said, my name is Johanna Schwant. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Before taking on that role, I was an academic advisor and part of the success team. Um, so working with students and new students is just something that I'm very excited for this opportunity to be here with you all. On this call is also Kim Boyson, who is part of our TRIO program. And so while there's certain parameters to qualify for TRIO, um, feel free to ask any questions. Um, I will go to the TRIO website and just point that out too, so that folks who want to apply can learn about that opportunity. Today, what we're going to do is, um, like Stephanie said, very informal. So I'm actually just going to navigate through our website, our email, our D2L page, um, and we can certainly review e-services as well, just to make sure that you're feeling comfortable with the different logins and some of the technology pieces that we do. So the first thing I am going to do is I will be sharing my screen. So I wanna make sure that you see the right information. So on the website, you should see the Ridgewater webpage. Um, is that what we are seeing? Yes, perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I am gonna start by changing the Zoom setting a few times just so you can see a few different things. The way the format is right now is kind of the standard setup. If your Zoom increases or if you're on a mobile version, it's gonna look a little different. You'll notice that the header goes away and then there's a drop down menu and a sidebar for you to navigate. So I'm going to zoom back out just because this is my preferred format. What I want to point out are a few key things. Um, so the first one I want to highlight is the logins tab. This is going to be your main option for when you're logging into your D2L Brightspace, which is where your classes may be hubbed, the email and Office 365, e-services, and star ID. You might use media space as well if you're having to do any type of recordings of your computer, but most students mainly use the star ID to retrieve or reset their password info. They use the email in Office 365 and the D2L Brightspace. So to start with, we're going to go to email first. Um, what you're going to want to do is you can access this through Outlook or you would go through the logins and then email option. You're going to have to then um, let's see, you're going to have to then type your login info. So if you have a pen or if you're on the computer navigating this with us, go ahead and type in your star ID at go.min, M-I-N-N, -N, state spelled out dot edu. Now, once you've done that, you're going to have to authenticate your user, uh, username and password. And what that means is you're going to have to select um, to get a phone call, to get a text message, or use the Microsoft authenticating feature. Once you do that, you'll be able to fully access your account. In the hub, what you're going to see is a couple different options. Um, I am going to go back out because it looks like it did not pick up my student profile. So I'm going to stop sharing real quick just to make sure I get the right profile for you. Let's see here. Nope. So, of course, I'm having some technical issues, probably because I have both a student and an employee profile out there. Um, let me just take a quick minute to see if I can get that figured out. Here we go. Okay, so once you're logged in, what's going to happen is it'll default and it should load for you where you're going to see the quick access option. Um, to the left of the web page, you should see the different Microsoft apps that you can download. Once you have your personal computer, you can install Microsoft Office, so you'll have access to the various apps as a student. This is included for you, so you should not have to pay for an additional subscription. 
The key tools that you'll want to know about are so Microsoft Teams, which allows you to do some chatting. So if you're doing any classwork with group members, this is a great feature. Outlook is going to be your email. So this is going to be the formal one that we want to make sure you know about. Download the app on your phone. Make sure you're checking the web version. However, email works best for you. In the email, I want to point out a few options and key things to know. So the first one is, how do you search for someone? So let's say you attended today's session or you're watching the recording and you're thinking, I really want to get a hold of Stephanie, Kim, or Johanna, but I just don't know who I need to um, reach out to to get their information. So what you can do is you can either start by searching or you can click on the to option and then you can actually search the directory for the system. So in this case, I'm going to type in my information. And what you're going to see is you see my St. Cloud State email from when I was a student. And then you're going to look for my professional and my career email, which is the Ridgewater account. So that's something you want to be mindful of is making sure you know who you're reaching out to, just in case there's duplicate names or profiles out there. Um, the, after you've done that, you can type your body, be sure to include a subject line, attachments, whatever you need to do, and then click send. Now let's say that you're someone who gets a lot of emails and you're trying to figure out how to organize everything. You want to know about your classes and keep things in order. Something that you could do is under the favorites option in the inbox, is if you right click, you can clean it up and do the empty option, mark as red, rename, things of that nature. You can add a favorite folder. You can navigate different groups. Um, if you need to create an additional folder under the folders tab, so this is something I used to tell my students to do is create a folder or a different section for all of your classes. And then you can, um, then you can track emails from instructors, when you submit assignments in D2L, which we're going to review shortly, you'll get a notification. So just a different way to stay organized by semester. Um, this is just really helpful in terms of navigating all of those key communications because Ridgewater email is our official communication tool. So while you might get a text message, while you might get a phone call, your Ridgewater email is something you want to be checking regularly. Kim and Stephanie, I'm just going to check in with you. Is there anything in email that you think we should highlight? Can't Not specifically anything. about functionality. I guess just a reminder to be checking it frequently. And I'm sorry if you did say that, but I think it's worth repeating. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So then um, for our guests who are on the call right now, are there any questions that you might have about email? So Ridgewater email, I'll check the chat, Stephanie and Kim are monitoring, or you can just un unmute yourself. Okay, so I know, especially as years go on, email is just becoming a very standard tool. Um, when I was in school, it was starting to be used more. I'm sure Stephanie and Kim can relate. That just wasn't really something that we regularly used. And so we just wanna make sure everybody is comfortable with this. Let's see here. I am going to minimize that. So the next thing what we wanna talk about is we're going to go on to the D2L web page. So um, you should all see the Ridgewater website again. Is that correct? OK, so what we're going to do is you're going to go back to logins and then click on D2L Brightspace. And so then once you're here, you're going to go ahead and get logged in. You're going to have to type in your star ID and your password, and then eventually under my courses, you're going to start seeing classes. Now, for many of you, your courses will most likely not be open yet because those usually those links um, for you to click on usually do not open until closer to the start of the semester. So closer to August 22nd. Once you're on there, <clears throat> you'll be able to click on the different courses you need on your website, excuse me, <clears throat> on the website, you should be able to see your different classes and then that will bring you to the home page. 
And so what I'm using right now is a general course, which means this is probably going to look a little different for your classes. Your instructors typically have an announcement page. They may have a calendar. They may have different um, things. So like, for example, you're not going to see the option to change your role because you're only going to see the student version. Once that loads, what I would like to point out for you are the different tabs or the headers. So a few things to note, um, the materials section, depending on your instructor, there may be additional information here. Content is clear is typically where in your instructors will post like your syllabus info, a class schedule, um, any of that need to know information. Some instructors may have a calendar that's linked to their class. The other piece to note is communication. So depending on your course, you may see a link for announcements. You might have access to your entire class list so you can find email and contact info for your instructor and for your classmates. Um, you would also have an option. Let's see here. So it looks a little different for me. So I'm gonna go to the discussion tab. You would also have an option for discussions. And so I'm not sure if any of you had this option when you were in school. I know with COVID, a lot of things went online, so you might have been exposed to this. Um, discussions are essentially different chat boards. And so you'll have various topics posted. Your instructors will give you guidance on what you need to type about. And then you respond to your classmates on that. And so um, things to know with discussions is check with your instructors and know what's expected know the length, know due dates, know how many re reads and replies you'll need to do. These are things that your instructors will typically lay out for you. The other pieces under communication include email, which is great if you need to email someone. Um, you can do that right from your D2L page. So the next common feature will be your assignments. Now this is an important tab to know because this is where you're gonna be turning in your coursework. Assignments itself is going to be where you drop box or upload or turn in paperwork and projects. Um, if you have questions on this, it's important to visit with your instructors because it could vary, but typically what you're gonna see is a folder where you can upload an assignment and it'll be labeled or titled for you and it'll include the due date. The other pieces to know would be things like grades so you can track your grade in the course quizzes where you might need to take exams, um, surveys, and then self-assessments, which as these are used, your instructors will let you know about that. We also have great tech support um, and resources where if you have questions, you can always let us know. So the next piece I really wanna strongly encourage you to highlight and save and make sure you know about is our resources help option. Under here, you find quick links to things like our bookstore, to our D2L help desk, to the library itself, your Office 365, which we navigated when we were logging into email. And then I also really want to highlight a few other areas. So I want to highlight your tutoring and then online tutoring, which is through a partnership called tutor.com. So during you know, business hours, um, reach out to our professional tutors. They will assist you. After that, if you're maybe more of an, a night owl and you're like, I just really need help on an English paper, you can visit tutor.com and then, then they'll have the subjects listed and you can see if you can get some support that way. Okay. So before we stop with uh, D2L, I do want to highlight, and I'm not seeing it, so I'm hoping Kim and Stephanie can help me, is I'm not seeing an option for Starfish. Is that still through the D2L tab? I, I believe if you go back to the main page, Johanna, it should be there. But I also wanted to mention the videos. Did you talk about the videos that... I? I did the not tutoring, tutoring on that's on the main page. Can you see starfish right there at the top? Yeah. Yes. Okay. But so if you scroll down to the lower right hand corner, sorry, I didn't mean to. No, lower. Okay, perfect. Yes. So um I honestly forgot about these videos. This is a very important. Kim, I may I may ask you to speak on it a little bit, uh, but 
from what I can see, there's a variety of topics related to yes. navigating and being successful in exactly. technology. There's a, there's a video about each of the sections of D2L. Um, mm -hmm. And so if you're, if you're confused, and I actually would recommend that you take a, a few moments before school starts and go through these videos, um, especially if you're going to have a, an online class. Yes, there's some really important ones. Um, so like the Pulse app is linked to D2L, so you can get notifications about your courses. Um, utilizing Zoom, even if you're in an on-campus course, you may still have some Zoom things you need to do. Let's see, other good ones to know, the read aloud extension. So if you're someone where you need some of that extra guidance and support and hearing things as you're reading, read aloud extension is a great feature to utilize. Um, the instant messages, I'm not sure how much that one gets used, so I would I would definitely check with each instructor to see if that's a preference or not. Um, but yeah, start with this, and then if you have questions, let us know. Thank you, Kim. Um, the next piece I wanted to highlight is Starfish. Now, I won't click on this option just because I'm not a student, so it's going to look a little different for me. Starfish is going to be your access on a um, how you can schedule appointments with an academic advisor or a school counselor. You can see comments and feedback and celebrations, as well as concerns from your instructors. Uh, it has links to what we would call your success team. So that might be someone from disability services, that might be someone from counseling, that might be a professional advisor or success specialist like Kim and Stephanie. Um, so you really have one spot where you can navigate all of that information. Kim and Stephanie, you use Starfish a bit more. Is there anything with that that you think the students should know about? Well, you can schedule an appointment with your advisor or you know, even a teacher or whatever right through Starfish. Um, and it's pretty simple. There's a calendar set up in there and, and so on. Um, Stephanie, I don't know if you have anything else to add. No, not generally. I think both of you have really highlighted kind of those features really nicely. Again, just to reiterate, if you are receiving communication that might come via Starfish, um, you know, it might be a general question. Again, it could be a concern from an instructor. Um, it might be a general notification from the student services team. It's meant to be just a supportive outreach. Um, and so there are just in the interest of making sure you have what you need for a particular course, um, you could be hearing from, from that channel as well as other platforms as well. So just keep tabs on those things, be responsive as you're able, um, just so that we can kind of help facilitate and direct you to appropriate resources as needed. So just a little add on there. Mm -hmm. um, and another important thing to know is that you usually get a Starfish notification to your Ridgewater email. So if there's communication related to our Starfish uh, website, you would get notified about the kudos or the concerns or the alerts, um, just because we really want to have as much transparent communication as we can. So that's why we emphasize email and your starfish and just making sure that if and when you have questions or concerns, you know that you have ways of getting a hold of us. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the Ridgewater website. Let's see here. And what I would like to point out are a few different things on our website, um, because our website is really a great resource for you to find different information. And so the few, I'm going to start with our academics. Um, anybody who's kind of just an undecided student, all kinds of career goals, not sure what you're doing, but you know you're taking classes, check this tab about and take a look at our areas of study. Now, typically we think this is for our new students who haven't applied yet, but I, I've been doing my job for nine years and as much as I absolutely adore it, there wasn't a major for this. There wasn't a career path. I didn't realize what I was getting into until I had mentorship and opportunities. So I definitely think about this and wanna just emphasize, explore all of your options that you may have. Um, the other pieces to know under academics as you prepare for each semester to pick out classes as you can access the course schedule this way. You can access our catalog if you're wanting more info on classes. Um, so just an important tab for you to know about. Now under admissions and aid, you're probably thinking, well, I'm already accepted, so why do I need this information? This tab has a quick link to our financial aid website so you can get more information a quick link to Ridgewater scholarships. Um, so applying for free money 
And then we also have things that talk about um, like an admissions checklist where you can just kind of use that even current students. I say this is a great tool just because it's a guidance of things to do to be successful for the semester. Our diversity tab is something new that we've added because we're really trying to emphasize our inclusion efforts here at Ridgewater. And so here you might find information about our DEI or our diversity, equity, and inclusion blog, which students can write for that blog. So if you have topics or things you want to share, let me know. Um, we have information on speakers that we do monthly, training opportunities, uh, student clubs and advisory groups that are related, and then translated fact sheets about different programs. So if you're someone who has family who speaks um, Somali or Spanish and you're wanting to tell them more about programs that you might be studying, um, this is a great option for you to just have that for them. Now, the other main tab you're going to most likely use as a student is your student success and activities tab. So under this option, things that you should know about, I'm going to actually start with the middle option, the student resources. At Ridgewater College, we have something called basic needs resources. So if you are a student who is in need because you might be doing great today and you might need support tomorrow and you might need to wait for your paycheck on Friday or next week or your car breaks down or whatever the case, we recognize life is happening and there's a lot of expenses to that. We want to make sure that you're able to get your basic needs met so you still have that opportunity to focus and be successful in school. And we know that your needs need to be met before that can happen. So what we have is our basic needs resources and we have a coordinator. Um, his name is Mark Taylor. He can assist you in doing some of that research if you're someone who needs help looking into housing or transportation or childcare, um, food insecurity is real. And so we recognize again that you might need help finding groceries and sustaining yourself, whether that's regularly, one time, whatever the case. We do have campus pantries that are free to access for our students. If you're someone who has needs or you're just not even sure where you're at, but you have questions, start with Mark and we can always see how we can assist you. The other areas I want to point out is things like knowing about your final exam schedule, tracking class cancellations. You know, we live in Minnesota, so come winter, you never know if there's going to be a class cancellation or not. You do have other ways of being notified, but this is also a good link to know and bookmark and check. Other things to know in here would be things like information on our emergency resources, health resources, and then your students' rights and responsibilities. You'll get an email from our Dean of Students on this information too, but I just want to make sure you know where that link is. Under the Student Success tab, websites and pages to know about include our Academic Support Center or tutoring. And so on our tutoring page, you can find information on scheduling and appointments where tutors can do in-person or virtual. Um, they will have their schedules listed. This is a free service and it's open to our students, both campuses and again on virtual if needed. On this webpage, you'll find their contact information, the subject areas that they can assist you with, um, Zoom links, and if you're just not really sure who to start with or you don't see your subject listed, then still reach out because we have professional tutors. And so while we might not be able to teach that content, they can still provide support on how to have those skills to read your textbook, to pull out key ideas. Um, everything from how to do citations and write a college paper to how to do spell and grammar check to how to pull out key ideas if you're doing any type of review. And of course, our Academic Support Center also is connected to our library. So if you are just a diehard Harry Potter fan and you wanna check out that book again, um, you can always rent books from our library as well. It's in the same location as our Academic Support Center. So a few other things, and you can always navigate this and check it out, but other tabs I wanna really emphasize for you would be things like our counseling support. So at Ridgewater College, we have professional counselors who are available to help students who might have questions, concerns, curiosities, and need to talk to someone with personal counseling. 
This is different than your academic or professional advisor. They are here, they are skilled, they are trained, and they are extremely supportive and can help you. Um, so if you're someone who might want to talk, whether it's related to personal counseling, career counseling, whatever the case, you can always call to schedule an appointment or use the online form. This is again a resource that you can access through your Starfish as well. In addition to that, I want to highlight our disability services. So if you are a student who is seeking accommodations, um, please check out this website and then find out the process for applying for that. So there is some documentation guidelines and accommodation requests that you'll need to know about. There are certain specificities on who can apply and who is eligible for disability services. Um, if you have questions, our contact info based on where your campus location would be, would be Terry Grindy on Hutchinson or Jay Morrison in Wilmer. Now, if you're an online student, you can reach out to either campus. So the next few tabs I wanna point out would be things like looking up housing and community. So if you are not from the area, if you are, however you're looking for housing, um, we want to make sure and point out that we have links to our campus, uh, to our community chamber websites. We do have a working PDF list of housing units that are available. Um, we have information, again, on additional resources, like knowing the bus systems, knowing about childcare and our food shelves. And then that is broken down by campus, so Hutchinson and Wilmer. The other pieces I would like to really just kind of emphasize and point out to you are things like our technology services, our IT folks. Um, they are here to help support you as well. And so when in doubt, you can always start by reaching out to them. On their web, web page, they have information like a student resource guide that you can download. They have various links and how-to guides. Um, they have the one-stop support system, so some phone numbers depending on what type of questions you have and then they have their campus office information listed. So this is a great resource as you're starting the semester because knowing your technology is gonna be one of those key things to help make sure you start the semester successfully. Johanna, I'm gonna just interrupt really quickly. I did get um, just a private message that I'm gonna read aloud in case that's helpful for the group. So the question is, I am enrolled as an open enrollment student and all classes are online. Are we supposed to get some type of student ID to use if we want to go to the library or anything on campus? So um, you, you would be encouraged to still have a Ridgewater ID. I believe renting books is through our library itself. Um, I know that there's a process to access a card, but I don't know what that looks like in the library. So if you're a Ridgewater student with us, I would encourage you to still do that. And I'll point out where you can apply for your student ID as well. So if you haven't done that, you can complete that task today. Um, your ID also does get you into events for free. So even if you're an online student, maybe you want to go to a basketball game or you want to attend a speaker or event. Um, at this point, having that ID is going to be helpful in getting access to those for free. And it also gives you some student discounts around town. So that that's always nice to be able to save a, a little dollar or two or pennies or whatever the case may be. Okay, so the next couple tabs I'm gonna point out for you. Um, I, like I mentioned, I wanna talk about our TRIO Student Support Services. Um, and I am going to start talking about it, but then I may turn it over to Kim since Kim is a part of the TRIO team. Um, so I myself was a TRIO student when I was in college. I attended a different college than Ridgewater, but TRIO was just a phenomenal program for me. It's a program that is focused on supporting students who are first generation, so the first in their family to pursue a college degree. They work with students who might have disabilities um, and they work with students who would be considered Pell eligible or low income. And so if you have curiosities, if you're not sure you qualify, you can still reach out. If you know you might meet one of those standards, if you're degree seeking, so an AAAS, AAS degree, you should apply for this. I strongly, strongly encourage you to. Our TRIO team just provides extra added support for you so that way you can navigate higher ed and college. Um, so a Johanna opinion or statement is that college itself is almost like a foreign language. 
we have our own lingo, we have our own expectations, our own kind of norms of higher ed. And sometimes that can be overwhelming and that can be frustrating. So having extra support in addition to our professional advisors and your teachers just gives you more ways to be successful. So if you haven't signed up for TRIO or if you're curious about it, let Kim know. Um, visit with us on campus. You can actually use this apply today and complete the application on the computer. And then our TRIO staff will connect with you about intakes and processes. Kim, is there anything about TRIO that you would like us to highlight? I was just gonna uh, clarify a little bit. Uh, the, the first generation piece for TRIO is your parents or um, your parents don't have a bachelor's degree. So your, your parent may have graduated from a two-year college. Um, that doesn't count that doesn't pro prohibit you from being a part of TRIO. So I just wanted to clarify that. And, and we kind of specialize in, in transfer. Um, if you're planning to transfer to a four-year college, we do take students on four-year college tours. We set up appointments with um, the heads of the departments that you might be interested in. Um, and so, it, um, you know, that's kind of our, our specialty. Um, we do help with FAFSA, we help with scholarship applications, we just have a little more time to do those kinds of things too. So yeah, I put my um, email address in the chat. So if you want to get a hold of me, it's in there. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kim. So then as we're navigating the Student Success and Activities tab, a few other areas I want to make sure that I point out that I forgot to is the Warrior Card or Student ID, especially since that question came up. So when you click on this link, you actually are able to go ahead and request your ID. And then what this is going to do is it's going to take you to a new page so you can complete a form. Um, on this form, you will need to log in with your STAR ID information. And then it'll give you some guidance on what type of photo you should be using. So it's not going to be like a selfie or, you know, a family reunion photo. It's really kind of got to be your shoulders and up. Um, we do have options for you to take your photos on campus and have your IDs printed. This would just save you a little bit of that time. Okay, so then before we um, pause for questions, I just want to also point out under alum and foundation, our scholarships option. The scholarship deadline for fall semester has passed, uh, but what we do at Ridgewater is we award twice a year. So that way, even though you may have missed the window for fall award, you still have an opportunity to apply for spring semester. Um, the application will open here. Usually, I think it's mid-September. Um, and then it does close November 1st. It is one application. So if you're not sure which one you can qualify for, or if you don't wanna write many, many essays, do this application and the system actually filters for you so you can see which ones you qualify for. Um, things to know about our scholarships is you do have to be in good academic standing. So a 2.0 GPA or above. Um, you have to be an enrolled in at least six credits for the upcoming semester. Anybody who is in our PSEO or post-secondary enrollment option program, so you're currently in high school, you would not be eligible for this. If you do have questions on our scholarships, certainly reach out to your um, success networker through Starfish, your professional advisor, or the best person to contact will be Stephanie Jimenez, who is our scholarship and data coordinator. Okay, so I'm going to stop um, sharing my screen because what I would like to do is just kind of turn over to questions that folks may have. Um, I can see that Stephanie did put in the chat links to the Warrior ID card and then to our scholarships page as well. And I would also say to those attending, um, your questions don't have to be related to kind of what Johanna have, has been covering. Uh -huh. If there's something that is bubbling up for either of you, um, feel free to ask that and we can cover that. We've only got about 12 days, which is wild before this semester. So really we wanna open it up to kind of anything, books, um, mm -hmm. schedules, anything like that. So. Johanna, a question did come into the chat. What are the hours of the library? 
That is a great question. Um, I know our hours are, are kind of varying and changing. So let me look at our website. Um, but watch your Ridgewater email for those updates just because those may change. So right now, hours are listed Tuesday through Thursday, 8 to 2. That is our summer hours. Um, so what we can do is I know that they'll work on getting the website updated for the semester. Um, and then I believe a campus email usually goes out as well. I, I want to say in past years, it's been open 8 to 4.30. Kim and Stephanie, do you know? I believe that's correct. Um, yes, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Sorry. So, <laughs> it so could I'll, change too, you know, with COVID in there, things really changed for a while. So, yeah. Yeah. So, we, what happens is we'll address the needs of our students and we'll figure out those hours. So, if our students really have a need for hours later in the day, that may change so the library is open until seven. Um, if students really just are not accessing it and they want other types of support, that may adjust to regular business hours. But that is always communicated in more than one way. So usually the website and usually your Ridgewater email, um, sometimes even a text message might go out. So you will get that information as the, as the uh, semester begins. And again, I did, I did add, I, oh, sorry. Sorry, Kim. Uh, just quickly, I did put the library website direct link in the chat. So any of the links that I put in the chat, maybe just kind of open those up and bookmark those. I would definitely say per Johanna's comments about hours changing and the website reflecting those changes to maybe bookmark the library page that I put in the chat, just in case that's helpful. Again, what you're going to see reflected are likely the um, condensed hours for the summer schedule, and they should be updating that as we approach fall because the odds are those hours are going to be longer than what you're currently seeing. So just check that. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is um, we are going to stop recording and then for those of you that are on the call, if you have specific questions that you're maybe not wanting to ask while we're recording, um, We'll stay on the call. There's a breakout feature. If you need to visit with one of us separately, um, it's completely up to you. But we're, we're here to support you. So for those of you watching, thank you for joining us. And then for those of you here, we'll stay on the call a little bit.